Welcome to Come and See, your podcast for finding truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by All for Jesus Living Waters Ministry. With host and founder, Richard Case, and co-host and retreat leader, Kathy Riccone. Join us every weekday at this time to discuss news, spend time in the Word, and receive answers to your personal questions about living life in God's truth. And now your host, Richard Case. Well, good morning, uh, Kathy. Um, here we are in uh, heading into the third week of January as we're going to be uh, broadcasting this one, and we're you know we're still talking about the beauty of hearing God's voice, and uh, we are as you can see with uh, Kathy's background, and if I showed you a picture of our of our room where we are, it's. We're, we're still in Christmas season, <laughs> enjoying it, having a great time, and yeah, 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 it's going to be going to be great fun for both of us, and we've learned, um, you know, and keep and keep doing it. We, you know, we've said this before, but we, you know, we schedule, we uh, keep making sure we have plenty of margin, and the joy is, is the excitement of being around the family and friends, and uh it's really, really fun. We, we just had a, uh, a party. Uh, Linda invited um, our grandsons and their friends and then some friends of ours. Uh, and um, she, she goes uh, and sets up a gingerbread house building. Uh, so there were, there were 10. And that's a lot of work, I'm telling you. You know, just you know, getting it all ready so that it can be cleaned up afterward, by the way. And then um, uh, it used to be you could buy the house already assembled. Uh, you can't do that anymore. So Linda had to uh, assemble the base, the base, the basic house so it could actually stand up, you know. And, uh, and otherwise, there's so much time spent doing that that they, that, yeah, yeah. So she does all that and they're all set up and uh, and so they came and, um, and then she has it on platform and she's got all these icing and sprinkles and decorations and all kinds of stuff, um, uh, uh, on these tables. And, and then they, they sit around and start doing it. And it's fun just to have conversation as they're building this stuff, you know, doing this stuff. And, um, and then they finish them. Uh, then we line them all up. Um, and we, I have a, uh, uh, a voting for you know, most humorous, most interesting, most traditional, uh, and first, second, third, you know that kind of stuff. And so we we uh, vote on it. Um, then I tally it, and then I I had bought little uh, awards uh, trophies, uh, and we hand them out. And so everybody 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 gets a trophy. So it was it was just fun, you know. And and Linda's really good at this stuff to make it fun and funny and enjoyable. And everybody had a great time. Uh, of just sweet and that's what that's what we think Christmas is all about it's just enjoying you know each other and like you do with your family and we do with ours and friends and so we just pray that you know everybody will continue that and and of course in the new year is keep keep the sweet fellowship going you know with your inner circle with your small groups and and we're going to talk about that as it relates to uh, hearing God's voice is that we do need people around us to to help us stay centered with it and the privilege of the Holy Spirit and somebody else that can contribute to what God is saying to me and vice versa. And it's such a beautiful thing that God has done is he didn't, he really said, don't do this alone, but do this in sweet fellowship with others as I, as I process with you. So we'll We'll, we'll get into that. Um, last time we talked about scripture. So we're, we're the, the, the question is, how does God speak? Uh, and well, he talks through scripture. Uh, he's already spoken. And then we understand truth and then how to apply that truth. And we go to that source as a beginning point, which is, by the way, what you and I always do is whenever there's a question, whenever there's a, a wonder about uh, and you and I have processed a lot of things, it'd be easy to say, well, here's the answer. Uh, but now they're here, hearing it from me as opposed to learning what it means to hear, hear from God directly. 
So what I do is just say, well, let's go see what the word has to say. Uh, go ahead. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, um, as you look at uh, the ability to read and comprehend, um, the that skill and ability is all over the map. Um, uh, it can be, uh, you know, like I'm a I'm a speed reader, and I've learned to be a speed reader. I mean, I can read. I can I can read a, a book uh, in about an hour, and I do comprehend it. I I I, I able to receive, uh, know what it says, look at what it says. I, I may have to go back into it more depth with it, particularly if I'm, you know, like reading a book like Andrew Murray. <laughs> uh, like yeah, you can't speed read that, you know. Uh, you know, you're gonna have to go deeper with that. But um, or and other people like eh, I don't I don't like reading at all. Um, I read it, don't comprehend anything. Okay. Uh, well, um, remember God says, I'm going to uh, assist you the way that you are. So first of all, I don't ask you to be different than who you are uh, to do this, but I'll provide you uh, the competency to do this from me. Actually, we're going to look at a verse today that says that. Um, this is going to actually come from me. And uh, so what I do, and I hear this all the time, uh, I said, I get it. Okay, I say, I tell you what, um, let's just practice a couple things. Uh, and you'll start to see it actually, you, you do have this ability unique to you. I said, so first of all, I said, there's no rush. There's no speed to it. And there's not, the goal isn't to have, you know, more and more and more and more and more. Right. So um, let's take this verse. And the first thing I'd like you to do is just take the scripture and write it out longhand. Uh, you can do that. I'm not, I'm not saying reading it. I'm not saying comprehend it. I'm just saying take the verse and write it out longhand. You can do that. Okay, I can do that. Okay, go do it. They do it. Okay. Uh, you wrote it. Now, I'd like you to look at what you wrote and just ponder it a second. Based upon what you just wrote, what does that say to you? And don't censor anything. And I don't want you to go to a commentary. I don't, because this isn't, I want you to move away from, I got to get it right. And I'm not good enough. Yeah, yeah. And I'm, and I'm not good enough to get it right. So why don't I just bypass all this and just go ask the pastor or go ask somebody who I think is spiritual, you know, just tell me what to do here. Uh, Cause I don't read, I don't comprehend. I'm not good at this. And I, I'm not, I, I know I'm not gonna be able to do this right. I said, take that away. This isn't about what's right. Don't go to somebody else. Just whatever it says to you, just write it down. Including, I don't even know what it says. Uh, it seems to say this, but I'm not sure. Okay, just write what you think and see. Okay, um, they do. And then I said, okay, now let's dig into it uh, and process it further. And I said, first of all, do you see that what you wrote as what you heard, there's some validity to that? How, how beautiful is that? 
Okay, now now this is this is cool. Um, I'm not going backwards to it, and this is where the where the struggle is. I didn't say, um, you know, like we were talking last time about the question of being unequally yoked. What I didn't say is, well, what do you think that means? And they could write a bunch of stuff. It could be completely off, and there's no there's nothing there. I, I didn't say that. I just said, let's go to where the word says something. Write it out. What does that say? And yeah, and um, because they're responding to what is said, they're going to get a piece of it right. It's kind of fun. It's kind of fun. Yeah, and you're and you're not trying to uh, add to it or detract from it. It's just well, that seems like it says this. You know, and I, and I say, don't evaluate it, don't judge it, don't worry about it. Just what does it say to you? And they do. Okay. Well, do you, first of all, do you see that you just heard from God? Um, and scripture meant something to you. I said, now let's go, let's go deeper. Um, by the way, uh, you know, the second verse there, you didn't even talk about that. Hey, let's, let's look at that verse. Um, go write that out again. And what does that say to you? Um, and what I do see is I'm, I'm walking with them. Uh, there's no rush to it. It's not like we got to get to another verse. It's I need to show you that you can read it and you can receive from it. And when you do, and this is, this is what's so amazing, is that there's a power to that that is absolute and spiritual that it happens. They start to recognize that this is different. Why? Well, that's the, that's the power of the Holy Spirit uh, who's starting, to, and it's like, oh, you know what? This ain't that difficult. Uh, no, I know. Uh, now, will there be sticky things? Yeah. Will there be things that you don't understand? Yeah, you might want to get some help on those. Um, but you can primarily learn, even when you get to that point, is, well, it seems like, you know, like, for example, um, uh, and I use this in, in the retreat, Psalm 91 says, if you abide in the shelter of the Almighty, no evil will befall you. That's, that's in the English. And somebody reads that, and, I, and, I, and so I say, okay, write it down. What does it say? Well, if I abide, and they understand abiding, um, no evil will ever come upon me. I said, what do you think about that? They said, that, that just isn't true. That just, that just isn't true. Uh, that doesn't seem to be true. Um, because it seems to me, and I thought you taught, Rich, that the world is evil all by itself. Hey, by the way, didn't Jesus say some... Yeah, didn't Jesus somewhere say in you know the Gospels that in the world you're going to have trouble? You know, yeah, John 16, 33. And... Uh, well, how does that line up? And I said, I said, now think about what you're doing. You're saying, I, I read it. I do not understand it. And it seems contradictory to things that I know and or other places in scripture. So what do I do with that? Uh, and I said, okay, now this is the moment where you could reject it all. And just say, ah, it's too lofty for me. Um, and it doesn't make sense anyway. So you just, by what I call bypass it. Yeah, just skip it. I won't even think about it. He said, but, but see, God's trying to show you something. And the way that he talks in Abide is take your genuine questions, your authentic, curious questions and say, I don't get this. Um, could you help me with it? And God says, yeah, I can. Um, and they, and they might pray and understand and look and say, I still haven't, you know, do it. Hey, uh, Rich, could you assist me? You know, yeah. Um, because why? Well, I've done this. Um, yeah, I know, I know about this. Um, there's a problem here. And by the way, it's a fundamental problem with uh, anybody uh, reading it in their language. Uh, and that is that the Greek and Hebrew are what's called the original languages used in scripture. And it just so happens that the Greek and Hebrew 
are the most precious and beautiful and precise languages in the history of the world. Every word means something. Um, and there's in the Bible, there are 15,000 different words used to describe truth. I said in the English, there's only 5,000. You're already missing two thirds of the uh, process. I said, so one thing to consider when you run up against these things and say, the English says, should I go deeper? And maybe the Greek and Hebrew say something different that might shed light on it. Uh, yeah, and say, well, don't I have to go to seminary to do that? No, uh, which I did, by the way. <laughs> uh, and the fun, and because you don't speak it all the time, you lost it anyway, you know, so... Uh, the technology is so beautiful now that, well, let us let me show you where to go. Uh, you can go to studylight.org. It's called Interlinear Bible. Go to Psalm 91, click on the words, and click on the word evil. Uh, well, the word evil isn't dark, awful, black. It means things that annoy, frustrate, irritate, and come against you. I said, so it says no, none of that will befall you. I said, first of all, does that come upon you? Yes, <laughs> it, it, uh, it, all, I can't get around it. Now that's true. Jesus said that in the world, you're going to have this trouble. Okay, well then let's look at the word befall. Um, and in the, in the Hebrew, see, we, we interpret that as come upon us. The word in the Hebrew is will not characterize your life as a permanent aspect of your life. Yeah, and so the things that irritate, frustrate, and annoy me are not, are not intended, if I abide with him, to ever stay there as characterizing and defining my life. I'm going to have them, uh, and then I need to let God show me. And then, of course, our next question would be, okay, when it comes upon me. Okay, I get that. All right, I got it. But he says it won't stay there. What, how does that work? Great question. Let's go. Let's go find out. And and so see how it goes. It's just um, and these are these are people that say I don't read and I don't have skill. And it's not about reading. It's not about reading and comprehending. It's rather processing. And anybody, and I can take you know a five year old and say, you know, take this and write it down. They can do it. What does that say to you? It, they, they have something they can say. So there's no maturity required. Uh, and, and so as you teach it and then say, okay, let's keep going. Let's keep going. So if I help them, I'm not telling them answers. I'm just telling them to stay in the process a little bit at a time. It's just a verse or two at a time. Don't worry about, you know, it's not the whole thing. But if you do that faithfully every day for 30 days, at the end of that 30 days, you are going to be so excited for having learned how to read the, the scripture and, and, and receive the scripture, you'll never stop doing it. Um, and it had no, and you had no skill at it. By the way, nobody has skill at it because it's a spiritual thing. Uh, so it's just practice. Do you have anything else you'd like to add? I know you've, you've helped people with that as well. Right. Yeah. 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 And the fun, uh, it's very fun. 
and that's where I would encourage everybody is don't don't allow what what you think about yourself to dictate your ability to move forward but just have a heart to go and all we can say is this and this is this is nothing but joy uh, that that we have and it happens all the time this is the beauty of by the way the covenant is a uh, blessing see we, we tend to think of blessing of just things blessing is uh, for me is while well, I'm learning to hear God's voice um, to be a blessing for somebody else is to teach them to hear God's voice uh, and so it's really fun particularly when somebody like like you described says ah, I can't do this uh, I've just I'm not a good reader I'm not a good comprehender um, I don't do it oh, okay I understand it let's 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 practice let's see what how it goes start it start it they do uh, two or three days later, they come back and they just they just read what they wrote. And I, I said, okay, stop a second. Read that again. And they do. I said, do you understand that you heard God's voice? Uh, and it's like, and it kind of shocks them. Oh, yeah, that... You mean, you mean that's what it's like? You know, yeah. Um, and you, who said you had no skill, no maturity, you've never done this before. In just a day or two, you are starting to understand what it means to walk with God and how beautiful is that. And I'd like you to just rejoice a moment at that. You know, and, they, and, then, they, and then they're like, whoa whoa look at that wow uh you mean that's what it's like you know yeah and uh i said you will and i said some of the beauty actually and this is fun you know in a group particularly is that uh people that are let's say not far down the path in in deep theology they they can read something and they get this beautiful revelation about it, fresh. And they they offer it. And, and it's like, oh my God, hey, everybody, did you hear how beautiful that is? Uh, because they had such a fresh thought about it and God just did it purely to them. Uh, and they and they rejoiced it. We've had, you know, you and I have had uh, Ken Blanchard and his wife Margie, you know, um, the one minute manager on the phone. And I've been discipled them, you know, for maybe 12, 15 years now. And the neat thing about Ken is that um, he, he knew nothing about the Bible uh, at all. Um, wasn't anti-Bible, just didn't know it. Um, became a believer, and now he's getting exposed to the Bible. And he was, he was kind of that way. So I don't know anything about it. And, you know, um, why don't you just tell me what to do? And nope, we're going to get in the Word. You know, I'm going to show what they mean is get in the Word. So he starts to get in the Word, and then he reads something, and we'll be in, we'll be in our group, uh, and he'll say, hey, it says this. Yes, exactly. That's it. How cool is that? You know, you mean it's that simple? Yeah, it's that simple. You mean I just heard from God? Yes. And, um, and then he gets excited because he recognizes the beauty of the relationship with God and he's hearing from God. And it isn't because somebody else is more mature. It's he has, he has the same privilege as everybody else. You know, and, it, and it's a joy to get that revelation. And that's what we have to, that's what we have to do is when we take somebody who says, I can't do it, is let me walk you into pieces of it. And then it happens. They, they get excited and they recognize, why would I now not keep doing this? And, th and that's, that's the beauty of it. So uh, yeah, it's a great question. And uh, uh, I hope that everybody understands it, that uh, if you just, just start practicing, and again, we are more than happy uh, through our ministry. You can, you can uh, say, I need some help. Uh, hey, I read this verse and I'm not sure what it means. Uh, we would like to help you uh, to, because all we have to do is just get you started and you're off and running. And we would urge everybody, do not let ever the thought that you can't do it prevent you from doing it. Uh, yeah. Heavenly Father, we are rejoicing. Thank you for uh, Kathy bringing this up. We know a lot of people feel this way, uh, that it has to do with 
uh, in intelligence and uh, education and maturity and spirituality. And we just pray that uh, we all understand. No, it's a privilege to be in your sheep, uh, that we get to hear your voice. We can, we can learn it now. It'll be a great joy if we do. And we'll get excited that we get to understand you as you apply life to us. So we praise and thank you for that and urge everyone to have a heart to go. And we thank you in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Yep, see you then. Thank you for joining us for today's episode of Come and See, your podcast for truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by All for Jesus Living Waters Ministry. Send us your questions and comments and tune in tomorrow for more answers to your personal questions about living life in God's truth. Remember, God's will is best and none better. His truth brings peace in this world of chaos.